All right, hello and welcome back to the second episode of Daily Driving Nixverse. I made everything on my list that I wanted to show you and I somehow corrupted the recording and everything is lost. So I'm going to quickly recap what I did and do something different for today. So grab a coffee and enjoy the second episode. So what I already did is I installed Tmux, uh, NeoVim was already installed and it works properly and GNU Sto. I also added Kitty to, to the mix. Then I set up GNU Sto, added NeoVim configs to GNU Sto, added the Tmux configs, also the Kitty configs and then I put everything in versioning. There was a big problem with adding the NixOS configuration.nix file into GNU Sto because when you move it out of the folder some absolute paths fail and you cannot build and all the works around that I tried did not work so I made a git repository inside the etc slash NixOS folder to back it up. Okay let's get into it. First I kept all my contract files in a central dot files folder. Inside I have subfolders for kitty, neovim, tmux and some of my scripts. With GNU Sto, I don't copy files manually, instead I just run Sto and it creates symlinks from the .files directory into my home folder. The first command with n is just a simulation so you don't do it, if you actually do it with v and t you create them. If I quickly check the symlinks you can see the kittyconf is linked, the .config neovim is linked and the tmux config is linked. And here are the commands that I added with the scripts in the background that are also linked. Next, I also version my system configuration in EDC NixOS. This is where the configuration.nix and flake.nix lives. I initiated a git repository here, so any change to my NixOS config can be committed and pushed like normal code. To make the system reproducible, I use flakes. My flake file pins Nix packages and tells NixOS how to build the system. To apply changes, I could either do the Nix flake update, followed by the flag tag, and the exact name of your flake. But we don't have to do that anymore because I made some custom scripts. They are inside the dot files. Let's have a quick look at them. So I recreated the structure so the scripts are linked to the dot local bin directory. The first script is flake only, which just updates the flakes and rebuilds NixOS. So it just does the exact commands that I just showed you. Next, we have a push only script. This script pushes the dot files repository and the NixOS config repository. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I basically wrote another script that does all the pushing and committing. We can have a look at that quickly. It's kind of a big file, but in essence, there are just a few functions in here. There's the push repository, which uh, commits with a current timestamp and there is the main that just check uh, which repository that i want to build and either pushes the etc nixos or my dot files in the home folder so i just wrote that as a script because i call it from multiple stages the build all basically just combines everything it rebuilds nixos and pushes both repositories in one command um we give an update message we make the flags we do the rebuild and push config this again pushes the git repository in the etc nixos and the dot files and if we for example try it it needs root it builds and this is the custom output that i added so you can see it tries committing and pushing but there is nothing to push so it didn't same for the edc nixos folder there's nothing to push so all you saw right now was the things that are planned for episode two and i spent hours on it it's it's quite hard to do or i thought it, it that there are a lot of little nifty things that you have to know that i didn't know and i basically did a lot with chat gpt and other research and in the end this is how i plan to manage my nixos system all the files will be available on github the links are in the description and the nix flags are a class of their own which you have to read a lot about it's not something that you can just do without reading about it but then let's get into the backup program for episode two so made a new list of things that I can tweak. There are a ton of different things that I can do, like automatic upgrade, garbage collector, limited store generations, like the generations when you build your system newly. And we can optimize the store. We can preserve config histories, so we can go back even in the history. We can automatically enable CPU upgrade or device firmware upgrades, enable SSD trims that kind of prolongs the life of your SSD by deleting unused or reformatting unused blocks. And I'm not sure. I, I Built my PC myself and I don't know if I have Bluetooth but I will try to enable it if I have it I'm not sure all right let's get into some NixOS tweaks I've been reading a lot about NixOS so we enable the automatic upgrades automatic reboot is a thing that Windows does and nobody likes Windows then we want it to also upgrade the flake 
I call it Nixus, which is not very creative. Then we could add, um, I'm going daily. Let's see how that will work. I'm inclined to rebuild after every change that I did because I don't want to break the system like I did right now. The error that we just saw is because I made a mistake. I didn't close the parentheses with a semicolon. Now that that is done, the next step is garbage collection. We have Nix GC garbage collector. We want to have it automatic. I think garbage collection doesn't need to run daily. That's why I put it on weekly. And I will delete the options that are older than seven days. I'm leaving soon for two weeks. So does that mean when I reboot my PC that it will delete all the older generations that I have? Let's go for 20 days just to be safe. Build and see if I have some errors. Now what? I did the same thing again. Did not put a semicolon at the end. Retry. And it seems to be working. The next thing would be a bootloader option. So we put it right with the bootloaders. I want to have maximum of 10 configurations when I rebuild often and I just build and build and build. I don't want to have hundreds of them eating my storage space. I'm not even sure how much storage space they eat. Okay, the next part is in the next settings. I'll just put it at the bottom of the settings. It is auto optimize. I want to enable the option that it automatically optimizes the store so it dedupes duplicated things inside the stores. This might be really complicated, I'm not sure if I fully grasp it, but it is there to save space as well. Test it, no errors, good to go. I just saw that there is also an x.optimize option where we can enable the automatic uh, optimize store function that we just added earlier. And we once again will do this weekly. And now I've learned from my mistakes, close the parentheses with a semicolon. Nix optimize does not exist. Oh, it's written with an S. It is actually English English and not American English. Good to know. And it builds. Now there's another option that I want to enable and that is that I want to preserve my config history. It will be embedded in the store as well. And that is just system.copy system configuration. Uh, we save and quit. We rebuild. Oh, it's not supported with flags. Then we delete it. Since I have a few of the hardware things down here, I will add the things that I want to change as well down here. You can go hardware.cpu.amd if you have an Intel, it's .intel. And we update the micro code. It's true. Did I make any typos? I don't know. We will see. Now the next part, services firmware updates. Whooped. I'm just gonna add all the options that I talked about earlier. The next one will be, this is weekly by default. And the next part would be hardware dot Bluetooth. And in here we want to enable it. Power on boot is also true. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. And I believe we're all set. Hopefully we'll just build. And I believe it does. Now that I've just built it, we can do the push only command that I made. Everything is now versioned and we're all done. It was a really rocky experience. I struggled a lot with GNU Sto and Simlinks and Git repositories in not in the user folder but inside of other folders that was really annoying to do but nonetheless i think i've reached a really stable point i've also installed store citizen i'm gonna make a video about that if the file is not corrupted otherwise i will just not make a video about it i don't i can't be bothered to do it twice that's it for this episode um leave a comment what you want to see in the third episode i'm currently still thinking that i want to do um hyperland is it called hyperland the just the, the desktop engine the tiling window manager and start there and this will probably go on for quite a few episodes then. If you want other things, just leave a comment. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good week. Bye bye.